I, I genuinely would like to know why. Why are we in this timeline? What do you mean? Press help key to enter setup. What is this? Yeah, I know I didn't post it in the Discord. Alright, hang on. Pokemon comes out in 30 minutes and you're gonna play this. I don't have the money to buy Pokemon right now. <laughs> so I'm not playing Pokemon right now. And I think I'm going to have to move my webcam. I'll just leave these unlocked and move them if I have to. So look, unless someone's buying it for me, which I'd rather not be the case, because I was going to play it with Patrick. Doki Doki Literature Club. The game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. What do you mean you're making a lease? Individuals suffering from anxiety or depression may not have a positive experience playing this game. Would you like to review detailed content warnings, which contain spoilers? Alternatively, in game content warnings can be enabled. In the settings menu at any time. No, thank you. I agree. I've played the original before. Please enter your name. Mini G works. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to let me do that right away. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to move webcam. Alright, we'll move it up here. And pray that I lined this up correctly. I did not. Not even close. Good job, me. Alright, hang on. Let's make this work. No, no, stop snapping. That good now. Needs just a few more. Oh, no, 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 wrong way. I selected the wrong thing. That looks right. I hope. I hope. Did I pay for this? Like a year ago. <laughs> And it was like 20 bucks. <laughs> I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. It would be good pay. That's good. If you weren't in training. So are you almost done training? If she's gonna chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk, and let Sayori catch up to me. <sighs> I overslept again. But I caught you this time. Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. <sighs> Say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, Vinny. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me, after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean even if you want to. Whatever you say. <laughs> the 
cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. So next playthrough option, had a full boyfriend. I won't say no. But I also don't want to say yes. Have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm not really interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Eh, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? Sure, it's possible that I did in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Siri likes to worry a little too much about me when I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know. And I know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. Alright, alright. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit. Even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. School day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I knew it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Saria wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Oh, I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello? Sayori. Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know... You know what? Well, that you could come to my club. You could get through Kim. Start making... Yeah. I believe in Kim. Sayori. Yeah? There's no way I'm going to your club. Ah, <sighs> meanie. Sayori is vice president of the literature club. You're not wrong, Patrick. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. I'm sorry, is that a dab? You're fucking dabbing at wasting your money. I guess I shouldn't be surprised you are getting a fucking eye tracker. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest, after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title of Vice President. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please! Why do you care so much, anyway? Well, I kinda told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. Nasuke made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead, or if she's so cunning as to have planned all of this out. I let out a long sigh. Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes! Let's go! And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. <laughs> I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here! I told you, don't call me a new member. Eh? I glance around the room. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori always says nice things about you. Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah! Vinny, what a nice surprise! Welcome to the club. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. <sighs> what are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. Sorry. Natsuki. Hmm. girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. 
Her small figure makes her look like a first year student. Why are ya, why are you dating? Who am I dating? That's a good question. I haven't decided yet. She's also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You could just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear, then turns back towards the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. Don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Ah, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that... Yes! I'm very familiar. I'm very familiar. Totally, 100% familiar. Very, very familiar. That's right. It's great to see you again, Vinny. <laughs> Vinny wants them all because he has no standards or class of having a normal relationship. Wow. All because I refused to bang my co-worker. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talk, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic, basically completely out of my league. So, having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... You too, Monica. Come sit down, Vinny. We made room for you at the tables so you could sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little too excited. And how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there is one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Whoa! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. Whiskers are drawn with icing, and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. <laughs> well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Sayori grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious! Sayori talks with her mouth full, and it has already managed to get icing on her face. Turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? Excuse me. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Why are you ma thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you or anything? Eh, I thought you technically did. Sayori so said, well, maybe, but not for, you know, you, dummy. All right, all right. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. Keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Ah, I guess... <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Eh, that's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I, I meant that, you know. I believe you. How do you guys eat a cupcake? Secret ingredient. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how else do you think she made the whiskers? Just saying. That sounded grosser than I meant it to, but you know what? I'm sticking to it. Well, tea and reading may not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So, what made you consider the Literature Club? Um... I was afraid of this question. 
Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seems really happy here, so... That's okay, don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member of any of the major clubs. Were you the leader of the debate club last year? <laughs> well, you know... To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for your events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. They all are going to have the same three voices constantly shifting between them. I'm gonna let you know now. Because I am terrible at remembering what voice I gave to what character. <laughs> Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. Must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. That is a timer. You could put it that way. Not many people are interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah! We'll do our best. You know it! Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all are interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they were all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though, I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Vinny, what kind of things do you like to read? Porn. <laughs> well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. I met her quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. Looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Giri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. Telling a good story such a, in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious, by the way her eyes light up, that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to Fuck you too. Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, I've read a horror book once. Desperately grasp at something I can relate to at the minimal level. This right, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you? I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think, or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. So real horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Well, why's that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called Don't say it out loud! And give that back! Fine, fine. <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is just as cute as you are. <laughs> Sayori sidles up next to Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm not cute! Natsuki, you write your own poems? Uh, well, I guess sometimes. Mari? Who is Mari? Should I know Mari? Because I don't. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No. Let's give her her eyes. Have you not met Mari yet? Oh, Marie. You know, there is an E at the end of that name.
you wouldn't like them. Not a very confident writer yet. I understand Dan to have Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be... <laughs> you're American. <laughs> you must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you could set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Uh... I guess it's the same for Yuri. Ha, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then, next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Um... Yeah, let's do it! Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Vinny? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. Huh? What's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I've bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Larry may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made it to any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um, I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. Natsuki doesn't look dejected, she looks angry. Everyone else looks kind of dejected. But not Natsuki. But, but... I'm sorry, I thought... Hmm. Vinny. Y you all... I'm defenseless, defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Yes, I'm so happy! Larry wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey! You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would have been super pissed. Then that makes it official. Welcome to the literature club. Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Vinny, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. Can I really impress this class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey Vinny, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right. Sayori and I never walk home together anymore because she always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! With that, the two of us depart the room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright. I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. It's time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes the, your poem the most. Uh, crap. Unending. Why is that game over? <laughs> Warm. Summer. Uh... Melody. Unrequited. Fantasy. Which served an ad telling you to do that. I somehow don't believe that. Fireworks. Figure Peso's new best. <laughs> Ignoring that. Hurt. Why did she react positively to hurt?
childhood. Sunset. Hop. Friends. No, uh, Sayori reacted to hurt. Your. Empty. <laughs> you would react to empty, you airheaded pain in the ass. Doki Doki Poetry Slam, trophy earned. Hang on, what is that trophy that I just earned? enough time during the poem minigame for the music to loop. <laughs> Oof. Fireflies. Family. Fluffy. Uh... Smile? Games. And the last one is... Melancholy. I think that was the only one, because she has an unrequited love fetish. Hi again, Vinny. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. Welcome back to the Literature Club. I was uh, the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Vinny. Hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on, like he deserves any slack. Sayori told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. M -m 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 Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. <laughs> manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Vinny always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work or without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sayori, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. You almost set your house on fire once. That's so. <laughs> you two really are good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Vinny G can become good friends too. Um, said Sayori usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh, Yuri, he even brought you something today, you know? Wait, Sayori! Uh, me? Uh, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? Never mind. Sayori made it sound like a big deal, but it's really not. Wh what do I do? Uh, I'm sorry, Yuri, I wasn't thinking. Guess it's me- Oh, that- That- I guess that means it's up to me to rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So, any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright, well here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. We could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? <laughs> she even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But... that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book, and I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Man, looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slump down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me, but I'm feeling a little too tired to read. Probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably gonna seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. 
Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is the idea that it'll... Is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. It's not like that at all, you know? We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm... That doesn't solve the problem, though. Eh? What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever. Nobody will ever come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Sayori is taking this really seriously. Uh, it's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Huh, that's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? What kind? Well, I guess we could... Cupcakes! Aha! Good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. What is going on with my phone? My phone is flipping the fuck out. <laughs> Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That... That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy! Cupcakes it is then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayori could put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Jesus Christ! <sighs> ah! I open my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. I nearly, I nearly fall out of my chair. <laughs> Sorry! Wait, actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're... Hold the fuck up! How the fuck do you know that I'm up? It's only 12.03. Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know. You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. Glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah, I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. That's <laughs> what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for my s for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh? Well, not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. I know it. Come on! At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Eh? Sayori glances around at herself. How is it written all over me? We're clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all over here. Uh, I run my fingers it tips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. It's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right here. Better wipe off the stain with my finger. But nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's gonna tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Hey, you meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Huh? That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. Start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Jesus Christ game, I was not ready for this. <laughs> this is so funny. Funny how? I didn't... I didn't turn off the thing. Okay, maybe I did. I didn't think... I didn't mean to. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does this, these kinds of things. Eh? Don't say that. You make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this, aren't you? Uh, I, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the bottom, the button near her chest. 
Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I bought it. <sighs> if you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Sayori does not give a fuck! Don't say that out loud. <laughs> anyway, you look much better now, so... Uh, why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like this? But it's so stuffy. Uh, it's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Phew! That's so much better. Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? Why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. You take care of me better than anyone else would anyways. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. Hehe, <laughs> I guess we really are a bit better at taking care of each other than we are at taking our care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so, huh? So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. Doing it again, Sayori. Oh, but I was joking that time. And it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Eh? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Okay! Or yay! I need to learn to read. Minnie, I can't wait to read yours. Yes, yeah, same. Felt to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? E yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. Couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share it with? I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori's is on a wrinkled shit sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. You can already see Mo Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I show my poem to first? Well, apparently I'm ending up on the Sayori path, so I guess Sayori. I'm definitely most comfortable sharing it with Sayori first. She's my good friend after all. Oh my goodness. This is so good, Vinny. Eh? I love it! I had no idea you were such a good writer. Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> this chick is insane. Absolutely fucking crazy. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. No thoughts, empty head. Yeah, basically. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a Vinny poem. That makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> I'm really happy that you, just that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really part of the club now. Not to mention to the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Uh, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's just like I said before, Vinny. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new like, things like this for other people? That's something only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. Not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah! And I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That'll be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm gonna hold you to that then. Yay! Now, you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, The way you glow through my blinds in the morning makes me feel like you miss me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed. Make making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. 
It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. Something tells me she wrote this first thing in the morning. Sayori. This is just a guess, but... Did you wait until this morning to write this? <laughs> no. Just a little bit. Can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Uh, yeah. Didn't mean to say it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school, it's bad to skip breakfast. You get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this was so much fun. Monica's the best. Uh, yeah. But next time I won't forget, and I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Who should I show it to next? Monica. Hi, Winnie. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we could do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. Much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, wanna share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Vinny. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? It's just that sort of barrier that we'll have to learn to get past some. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm -hmm. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori. <laughs> I really am on the Sayori path. Well, is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? Wouldn't be surprised if you had those sorts of things in common. Uh, well, we may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may be the case, but maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you, it sounds like the two you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you'd think. So, I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not reading into it too much? <laughs> I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Sayori's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell she likes exploring with emotions, like happiness and sadness. I knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things too. Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased towards their own kind of styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole, it wasn't too bright. It was too deep, stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. <laughs> I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. He, on the other side, was looking in. I hate this. So what do you think? Uh, it's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. Yes! I do too! <laughs> when perform
performed out loud, it could be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. I hate this fucker. This fucker. Oh my god. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. I guess it doesn't matter at this point. Well, it's about what I expected from someone like you. That's a little blunt. Well, excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. It just didn't evoke any emotions. So basically, it's not cute enough for your taste. Do you want to get smacked? I'll pass. <sighs> well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you like it. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. That's about it. Yeah, I told you that you weren't going to like it. I like it. But just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even try taking my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly! It's like when I, it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem, seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. The other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up a rhyme at the end, but then make it, made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Noski is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Okay, the only one left. Hmm. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes. More than enough time for her to finish reading. Um. Oh! Sorry. I forgot to start speaking. Um. It's fine. Don't force yourself. I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah. Why do you ask? Just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it. Ah, uh, so it's that bad. No! Did I just raise my voice? Uh, I'm so sorry. Gary buries her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine. I really didn't notice. What were you saying? Right, um... It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most notable thing I recognize in new writers is that when they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weak. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, it's not something you could be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that could go wrong writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki could be a little biased, though. Biased? How? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to, apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. 
After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. I'm sorry, I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking of that at all. But it took you a long- Fuck you, that did not take me long at all. <laughs> uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Huh? That's... a relief. Also, I liked the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it, I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest of it, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Minnie. Really? You must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it, after all. But remember, the poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon be left with, that, with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy to, that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. Yeah, maybe you're right. Guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Whew. Guess that's everyone. Glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. <sighs> and yawn, because I'm not getting enough sleep. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As I read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Huh? Uh, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you just completely miss the symbolism or something? Clearly about the feelings of giving up. How could that be cute? I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. <laughs> if I was looking at for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. And Vinny did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. Uh, I appreciate the offer, but I spent something that I accidentally skipped because I hit the button too soon. Uh, I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. <clears throat> and Vinny G liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. I don't know how to press history. I have tried every button on this controller, and nothing goes to history. Never mind. <laughs> I found it. Uh, uh, Excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon unless I go across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. There we go. Eh, it's not what I... Uh, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Benichi appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... no. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I wrote overly cutesy. Uh, um, 
Is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Vinny started showing up. Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. I, I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Vinny, she's she's trying to make me... She's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate the simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point of making all your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning shouldn't jump out of, at the reader, not force him to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Vinny. Wait, there's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and, me and meaning most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily... Not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Vinny? Um, well... How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whoever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. So of course it's gonna be... <laughs> Help me, Sayori! <laughs> Help me, Sayori! Ah! Yeah, apparently I have a harem without even trying. Hold me, Sayori! Natsuki. Natsuki glares at me, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead I turn to Yuri. But Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sayori! Eh? Yeah, everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? Vinny. Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. I, I agree. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless Sayori wants to tell Yuri what a stuck-up jerk she's being. She would never. It's Yuri maturity that made her upset in the first place. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why. Exactly why nobody likes... Stop! Natsuki, Yuri, you guys are my friends. I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people, and I love them because of their differences. Natsuki's poems, they're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented, so why are we fighting? B because, well... Also, Natsuki's cute, and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same way as they always were. Big and beautiful. Asking for Sayori's help was a mistake. Asking for Sayori's help was a mistake. Dear God. Sayori. Sayori stretched triumphantly. Monica stands behind her with bewildered ex <laughs> Yeah, me too! Me too! I'll make some tea. Yuri rushes off. Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. That's a mood! So this is why Sayori is vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader, and I can organize things, but I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that's kind of embarrassing of me. <laughs> nah, it's not like I could blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well... I guess that just means Sayori is amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. She might just be- she might be an airhead. Sometimes it's weirdly suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I would hate to see her get herself hurt. That makes two of us. You can count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to knot. Such a genuine person really does make a good president, regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk to her a little more. Okay, everyone, it's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright, well, mostly. Vinny, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome! In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learned something from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. Ah, uh, crap baskets. I did learn a little about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck? That means I can at least do a better job in pressing those I want to impress. Not to myself with newfound determination. Vinny! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. 
Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it, either. Sayori. About what happened earlier. Eh? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. Don't shake the baby. <sighs> That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't... You don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Phew, you know, Vinny, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. <sighs> Looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's do this. Two second think when you do today's poem. What? Peace. Uh, meager. Uh, daydream. Fun. Anxiety. Unrequited. Unstable. Death. Jesus Christ. Uh, uh marriage? Yeah, fireworks. Uh, peaceful. Aura? Rainbow. Lucky! Bane. Skirt. Uh... Fuck me. Uh, strawberry. Uh, depression. Your... Puppy! Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I've been a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Vinny! Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. It's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh, Sayori nervously reaches her coin purse, fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill out onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves the one option. Ah, I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book as always. Up. Ah. I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Curry! Tell Vinny to let me borrow some money! That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. Pause. History. You should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And that is why... I am not buying Pokemon yet. Frankly, after pulling mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Uh, did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. Uh... <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution? That. Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. 
Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. <laughs> Buy something you can only responsibly afford. Not a $269 eye tracker for the sake of mostly one video game. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, I wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Pwap. Gah! Ow! What was... Huh? A, a cookie! Sure enough, it's giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is, is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution! Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. Then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> Natsuki! That's so nice of you! I'm so happy! Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori readily tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. It's so good! Mm. Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> you're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really too good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez, beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy you shared this one with me. <laughs> there he gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to, to nudge Sayori off of her. Hump! Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? Uh-huh. Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica, anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything re regarding her being late? B -b 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 Did you know she was gonna be late today? No. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She's probably just had something to do today. It's pretty popular, after all. Probably rejecting some dumb fucker's uh, confession behind the school building. Eh? You don't think she... she has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. Didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all? You're so strong-willed. But boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. But I'll do up anyway. Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You'd have heard the bell ring at least. Must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. I don't really. It just kind of started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Vinny. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd like... I really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks! So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not... not really? I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. She bumped the other girls away with her butt. Yeah, kind of. Yuri's back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Vinny, Vinny! Larry suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know, how the festival is coming up. Me and Monica are gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to go get some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Ah, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Only Monica. 
Oh, only my, oh my god. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> this game left that much of an impression on me when I first played it. Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Uh, are you going with Vinny to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. Oh, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. See if you can find poster paper too, okay? <laughs> okay. Ready, Vinny? Yep, let's go. Sayori and I exit the clever room. Follow behind us, Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Sayori, what exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? Oh my god. <laughs> I keep setting off my robotic- my phone's robotic assistant. <laughs> I don't know if Patrick knows, so don't say anything. I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. <laughs> Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep! We're gonna do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone is gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Ah, that sounds... kinda dull. Vinny, you're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems, it's about performing them. Like, you say the lines of the poem like, Between my feet. The last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moments between my fingers. But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, the once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Like that, Sayori. How do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh, you meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know. Uh, I know, I know. I just mean that it's pretty or unordinary contrast to your cute self. <laughs> Don't say that, it's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I'm so excited. The festival is going to be so much fun. Sayori spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey, Vinny, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. Mission, eh? It's been a long time since I've spent time with Sayori like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine, drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. Going adventuring with Sayori brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. Two of us enter the classroom. Sayori heads straight to the closet, and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons! She pulls a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand, too. Kind of dirty, though. Uh, Sayori starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. Alright, that's one down. Don't get distracted. We still need to find... Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. And at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Ah, I dropped one by accident. Oh no. Sayori bends over and smacks her forehead right onto the shelf. She falls to the floor and the crayons spill all over her lap. Ow, 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 ow. You okay? My forehead. Sayori clutches her forehead. Jeez, Sayori. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sayori is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hand, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. You shut the fuck up. As soon as this scene came on screen, the the house creaks. So it's like the timing of it was the house commenting on the fucking picture. Sayori slowly releases her hands from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow! Sorry. A huge red mark on the center of her forehead. 
A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Any... Where would I even find ice around this time? Uh, I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Even wincing from the pain, Sayori makes a silly joke. <laughs> what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Okay. I pat Sayori on the shoulder and run out into the hallway. To locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? Uh, it doesn't really matter, since it'll be used as an ice pack rather than a drink. But I know Sayori likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. Just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. Use one palm on her forehead and using the other hand to clumsily scoop the crayons back into the box. They say I'm already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Sayori, here. Hand Sayori the bottle of apple juice. It's nice and cold. Sayori opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Sayori, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Up. Oh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? Sayori places the bottle against the bump on her head. It stings. Just bear with it. It'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, Vinny. This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Eh, what do you mean? Uh, you know how we used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like, I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. Sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. I would start crying really hard. <laughs> you would rush over as quickly as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it wasn't really your fault at all, you know? Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it was my fault. Kinda like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Vinny, I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years, you're rushing to help me even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. Don't call me that. I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Vinny, I'm so glad nothing's changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Forever? I'm honest to myself. There's no telling where we'll end up, each end up for college or, or after that. It wouldn't be fair to me to make any promises. But, well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. <laughs> I'm so happy. Sayori has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know? Good luck with that. She's going to see your forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. Sayori hops to her feet. Ah, ah, ah. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Ugh. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. I follow Sayori out of the classroom. Sayori plays with her bangs to try to hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the classroom. Ah, you're back. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> ah, you're back. Good timing, I was just about to ready... I was just about ready to start with sharing our poems. Ah, uh, Sayori, your forehead. She's fine, don't worry about it. I was playing with crayons and smacked my forehead into the shelf. Well, anyway... Were you able to find everything we needed? Uh-huh, I have it right. Uh. Sayori frantically glances around herself. I forgot all this stuff. Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper, too. <laughs> Sounds like you end up doing all the work, Vinny. Ah, uh, well, Sayori... I have to come up with an excuse for Sayori. I made it an adventure. Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Guess I should grab mine. Make sure the crayon box is closed tightly. So Sayori doesn't spill them again. And end up hurting herself in another way. I return to my seat. 
We're gonna start with Sayori again. <laughs> Only Monica. <sighs> Vinny, I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Eh, I'm not hiding <laughs> anything. I was joking, but I didn't think that to be your actual answer, Kim. But your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one's too. Uh, you can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the only one who feels that way, so... Huh? No way. Not even Natsuki? <sighs> well, I guess Natsuki is at the least likely to admit that how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Huh? What? what, what? Stop thinking of weird things, idiot. I just mean you're a really g expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you know, somehow make everything in your life... But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking! Let's not talk about that. <laughs> I totally didn't burn the house down again last night. So yeah, I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel m more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Eh? I don't know if I understand. <sighs> you never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's head. <laughs> hey! I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Mm, maybe. Larry starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Vinny, will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because, well, first time you've written something for me. <laughs> uh, Sayori, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <laughs> Look, I just need something happy because I lost the house again. I need... Uh, I... Like I said, I, I burned it down again. I'm sorry. <sighs> Are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Uh, I broke my pencil. So Yuri ha hastily bends down to pick up the piece she dropped. But being inattentive of her surroundings, she bumps right into me. S sorry! It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sayori clutches the desk beside her to support herself, knees shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. You think? You think? You think? Let's sit down, Sayori. Y yeah. I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like bundles of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. <sighs> There's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up, and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, echo, echo. Echo. 
echo, 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 inside my head. Holy crap, Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did! Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but, I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. <sighs> Listen! Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. Thinking too hard about it. Point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best! I'm gonna keep writing till I die! <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Listen. I'm not in the mood for Sayonara tonight. <laughs> Sayori's... Uh, always had a hat bit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it. No more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. Seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. To Monica. Hi again, Vinny. How's your writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. Uh, I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright, it's pretty good. Makes me think of Sayori, like the other one that you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. <laughs> That's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her, even in this club, don't you? Oh my god, hiccups. Then again... I don't blame you for being a little shy. I'm not shy, it's just... <laughs> oh god, hiccups. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know it takes a little bit of time to make friends with everyone. But Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them the time of day. Don't be an asshole. You can talk to them. It's not like they're gonna bite. Or stab. Or break a neck. Or anything like that. <laughs> and you can talk to me every now and then, too. I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? Uh, no. It's nothing like that. You're just too good for a peasant like me. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah. Sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. <laughs> no, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. But anyway. You wanna read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing. Expanding. Piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating, waveform- Oh, shut the fuck up! Listen, you're the one playing this piano that's playing right now, and I know that. So shut the fuck up! <sighs> Excuse me. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a talk chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. Sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just kind of a thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Look. Mr. No-Face Protagonist. You're gonna be guessing for a long time.
Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to sit. Breaking the fourth wall, are we? You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Natsuki. Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. But I can't really say it's any better, either. Phew. What? Phew what? Well, anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take it as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you... Wait a minute. Maybe that was a compliment. <laughs> I'm glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well, uh, fine. Oh, it saved for me! Come on now. Well then, keep practicing. Maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's, uh... Something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Come to think of it... Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Huh? You think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. You never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type poem? Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how could someone so were fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Uh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Amy likes spiders. Who the fuck is Amy? Been really drinking down that alcohol, trying to get wasted when he has worked. This one is actually brand new, untouched by the alcohol. So, no. No, I am not. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she- You motherfuckers! You watched me struggling to open this! It was sitting right here, and I was trying to open it, and pressing the X button, and it barely left the stream. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. She likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg real bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? This is why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. If I did, it would be spilling out. Do you see it spilling out? This is a perfectly normal Gatorade bottle. And that's not even bullshitting. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated is issues with much simpler an... an, 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 an Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my- <clears throat> That doesn't matter. It could be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they make fun of you or think less of you. That just makes people stupid. 
Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone? It makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless it's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. Yuri. Let's see what you've written for today. Mm, well done, Vinny. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Oh, for the love of God! How did you even hear me? Huh? It, it's nothing. I'm just happy to help it inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to, do, to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. Very intimate exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? The Raccoon. It happened in the dead of night, while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scattering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. You know, maybe you make your own bread, so then you would have to slice it. The raccoon is taking to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to- Oh my god, she's calling Natsuki a raccoon. <sighs> the raccoon is taking to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlonian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Um... It was a, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I could see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things that I'm usually forced to keep to myself. Well, I sometimes enjoy writing about them. <laughs> That's funny. Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Uh, she... she did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She's... she's right. Uh, I mean... Does she really feel that way? Yeah. It sounds like you two have that in common. That's... well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Uh, please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> don't worry, your secret's safe with me. Okay. <sighs> well, thank you for sharing it with me.
You would like some bread to snack on. Like, give me a good loaf and I can snack on it for like a week. Yeah, probably. And Kim... I was making a joke. <laughs> After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. Uh, I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad you're a good listener. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really... I don't really do well with last minute pre prepar... <sighs> last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? We don't need much more than a few decorations. Sayuri has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're gonna be performing. Performing? P um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. The cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... You didn't already... Start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. You really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. Not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I... I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys. No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. I'll we'll have to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. Well, I'm sorry. But... I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event, each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. The more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun! That's right! And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? Inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it takes... And if all that... And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you could do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayuri looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we could do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... Looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Phew, thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Uh, you're, you're not far off. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I wanted each of you to choose a poem of yours. Save. Real quick, I want to see what happens. Return to desktop. Side stories. Trust and understanding. The side stories are stories of friendship that are unrelated to the events of the main game. To get all six side stories, try writing poems for different characters and viewing their special scenes in, in the main game. Okay. This is unique to uh, the, uh, the plus version. We're going to begin this side story. Which one was this? Trust Part 1? The 
club room. Okay, everyone. The literature club is starting. Let's all have a seat and take attendance, okay? Uh, I missed a big club. I knew it would be so difficult to start a new club. I feel worse with every day that passes without anyone coming in. I'm really starting to lose confidence. Monica is the only l member of the literature club. In the days that have passed, all of her efforts to recruit new members have been fruitless. Am I going about this wrong? Monica glances at one of her flyers. The headline is, Do you like literature? Maybe nobody is into literature enough to pick it over their other club interests. You can't just rely on people liking literature. I need to sell them on a vision. A vision! But what kind of vision? Monica rests her head on her desk, deep in thought. Before she realizes it, the recent nights of staying up too late start to catch up to her. It's so quiet, and the noise of the air conditioner is soothing. There is too much to this game to finish it in one sitting, Patrick. Oh my lord. Um, hello? Suddenly, a voice causes Monica to snap awake. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I never do this. <laughs> is this a napping club? No, this is... Monica pauses, suddenly embarrassed to admit that this, in fact, is the Literature Club. This is the Literature Club. Yay, I thought I got it wrong for a sec. I'm super sorry, it was like so unprofessional of me to do that. I am not doing a 24 hour stream. Don't apologize, I do that all the time. Oh. Uh, did I miss the club meeting? Where is everybody? Well, about that. This is everybody. Really? Just you? But we're getting more members, I'm working really hard on it. Hold on a sec. If it's just you, that means I get to be vice president. Wait, vice president? Um, what are your qualifications? Well, I'm better at napping than you. <laughs> Maybe I should be president. Now you're just making fun of me. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, what was your name? Sayori. Okay, Sayori. I've been trying really, really hard on this club. <sighs> I know you caught me at a weird time, but it's been really disheartening to not be taken seriously, you know? I care so much about this. I just want to find other people who do too. Oh no, I'm so sorry. I do care, I promise. I have a hard time being serious, that's all. I didn't mean for it to hurt you. I was just joking about the vice president thing too. I would make a terrible vice president. I mean, I'm sure that. Monica tries to say something reassuring, but it's difficult when she still doesn't know much about Sayori. I'm sorry that this isn't, like, a real club yet. Would you still be interested in joining after I find a few more members, at least? Well, no. I want to join now. Really? Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. Besides, I can tell how hard you've been working. You're doing something amazing, and you should be proud of it, you know? So let me help you, t uh, turn something stressful into something fun. If nothing else, I'm good at that, so... <laughs> Honestly, how could I possibly say no to that? That's really sweet of you, Sayori. Oh, I'm Monica, by the way. Monica! That's such a cool name. Oh, now you're just trying to cheer me up. But you're smiling. Well, I didn't say it didn't work. Monica glances at the flyer on her desk and realizes that her name is already written on it. So, what do we do first? Well, it's getting pretty late, isn't it? We could go home and try to come up with some new ideas to recruit to recruit club members. I could do that. Listen. Cool. And I think I need to put some more thought into my vision for the club. It's it's not Gator Room tonight. It's regular Gatorade. You know, like a mission. My mission is to make everyone happy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The both of you. Yeah, something like that I need to think about. Hey, do you like hugs? I guess so. So here he suddenly pulls Monica into a friendly hug, then let's go. Y'all need this. <laughs> Some people could just really use a hug sometimes. Besides, Sayori whispers loudly, Hug energy is what keeps me at my best. 
<laughs> Hug energy? Monica laughs. Although Sayori is very different from her, Monica feels her spirits lifted. Maybe it's just because she finally found another club member. But, well, I'm looking forward to tomorrow then. It'll be fun. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm gonna think real hard tonight about how to get more people. Yeah, me too. A day passes, and the time comes for the literature club, literature club, Monica and Sayori, to reconvene. As president, Monica ensures that she's the first to arrive to the club room, but she finds herself waiting longer than expected for Sayori. It's been ten minutes already. Maybe Sayori changed her mind about joining? No, oh, that can't be. She was so excited yesterday. But I'm getting kind of worried. Suddenly, Sayori comes bounding through the door. In her hand, she's holding a sheet of paper. Sorry I'm late, I'm here. It's okay, welcome back. And... Sayori spins over to Monica and deposits the sheet onto Monica's desk. Oh, what's this? Take my hands, take my hands, take me forward. Take me to your dreamland. Watching me to watch my step so I can't look back at my footprints. Climb the stairs ahead of me while I look up to you. The more I look forward, the more I look up. The more I can look to you. If you can trust me to follow your pace, I'll trust you to set it. If you can trust me to lend you a smile, I'll trust you to return it. Take my hand, take me forward, take me to your dreamland. Alright, hold up. I need to reach chat because apparently there's a lot going on. Kim, I'm a yeah, I'm not. Werehog, unfortunately. So what if, instead of taking a shower, we stood outside in the pouring rain and poured dish soap on our head? Jordan said if he got beat the fuck out of by these two, he'd die happy. I know something weird. Sounds like fun. I heard everyone's jacking off over here. <laughs> it sounds like it burns. The Clorox wipes up this toilet. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You wrote this, Sayori? Of course. Wait. Wait, no. That's the wrong side of the paper. Huh? I wasn't ready to share that yet. I'm so embarrassed. Monica flips over the paper. Written on the other side is a list of ideas for recruiting new club members. Uh, I can't actually bring back up the thing. Interesting. I guess she did. Oh, so this is what you meant to show me. But I'm curious now. Do you write poetry often? I do, but I'm sure I'm not anywhere near as good as it as you are. Yeah, shockingly, Patrick is the only sane one today. <laughs> really? I'm actually terrible at writing poetry. I've never written anything I was happy with. Like, I always write it again a week after I write it, and I'm like, Wow, this is so stupid. <laughs> God damn it, Jordan. I don't know. It's like the dramatic version of me doesn't agree with the person I want myself to be. Or something like that. Aw, you should have more confidence in yourself. You're the literature club president. <laughs> I guess you're not wrong there. I need to, like, set a good example or whatever. Mm, you know, I can envision the club doing something like that. Doing what? You know, like sharing poems we write and stuff like that? Oh, yeah! I would love that. It's such a good way to learn about other people, you know? It's like, we have so many emotions that we can't express to other people usually. Who is Fiona? Uh, but you can when it's in a poem, right? Yeah, I think that's helping me form a more cohesive vision for the club. So I'm glad you showed me. Well, even though it was by accident. Me too! I felt embarrassed at first, but now it feels kind of good that someone else read it. I'll try to show you more of them in the future. I would love that. Oh jeez, I'm getting distracted. Do you want to go over the recruitment brainstorm together? My brain stormed so hard. It was like a brain hurricane. My brain is a natural disaster. That is an understatement. <laughs> so you hurry, that's terrible. Anyway, let's take a look at the list. Make cupcakes. I was hungry. But it's a good idea, isn't it? Um, let me think about this. 
I mean, when would we have the chance to give people cupcakes? You know, like when they come into the club? What if we said we had free cupcakes on the flyers? I'm like, kind of worried that would bring in the wrong kinds of people, you know? Wrong kinds. People would come just for the cupcakes and leave. Oh, nobody would do that. That would be mean. But you know, I want to find people who are really into literature. Even if they don't know it yet. Let's see, the next thing on the list. Hunt for people reading books. I don't think I get it. Like going around the school and finding people who are reading books, you know? Like in the morning or during lunch. And we tell them to check out the literature club. Well, the problem with that is like... Wouldn't most people reading books just be doing it for an assignment or something? How would we know if they're just reading for fun? Uh, well... We could ask them. But then we'd be bothering people who are trying to do schoolwork. I didn't think about that part. Sorry. What the fuck, Patrick? Hey, don't apologize. You're coming up with a lot more things than I can. Oh, your next idea is to hand out flyers rather than just put them up on the wall. i definitely like to start doing that. I'm useful! <laughs> I never said you weren't. I just need to think. What would we tell people when handing them out? I don't want to just be like, Join the literature club. Let's figure out how we can better engage people. What if we told them about the club activities and stuff? What club activities? Yeah, I guess it's supposed to be my job to come up with that, right? The vision for the club. Okay, so you're pretending you're a normal person for a second. Wait, I, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> you know, like a random passerby who's getting a flyer. How would you react to the idea of a literature club? Mm, probably like, literature is stupid. I'm joining the anime. Call my bluff, Jesus. What the heck? <laughs> Sorry, I was just thinking of a friend of mine. Okay, what if I said that we, like, do group readings and discuss it together? I would probably nap through that. That's you, Sayori. Yeah, but that doesn't really sound fun to most people anyway. We need to really catch their interest, you know? Ugh, sucks. Why is it so hard? Monica, don't be sad. What do you like about literature, Sayori? Me? Well, kind of what I said about the poem earlier. I think it gives you the chance to express yourself. Like, express yourself in ways you can't normally do when you're just doing your normal day and talking to your friends. I mean, we all have so many thoughts and feelings that we just don't get to share, you know? It's like... Intimate. Yeah. How do we get that across to people? We could be like, express your true self. Be intimate with um. Be intimate with us. Okay, that's kind of... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh my gosh! What? What is it? I forgot all my things in my classroom! Must have got it too excited and rushed here, silly me. Rushed, but weren't... Oh, never mind. Did you want to get your stuff then? I'll forget if I don't do it now. <laughs> well, I'll wait for you then. Okay, it'll only take a second. Sayori dashes out of the room, leaving Monica momentarily alone. Monica sighs and starts shutting her thoughts on a sheet of paper. Express yourself. Be who you want to be. Make new friends. Discover a new you. Discover your heart. No, write your heart out. No, write into your heart. Write the way into your heart. Join the literature club. Write the way into your heart. Wow, that's sleep. Monica! He startled me. Sorry, but it's something important. On the way to my classroom, there was a girl reading a book. Reading a book? Let's hurry and recruit her. Wait, are you sure she's not just doing homework? I could tell she was really into it. Um... Well, I guess we could take a look. Monica grabs one of her flyers and stands up from her desk. Then the two depart the classroom, with Sayori leading the way. This way! You don't have to run! Sayori leads Monica over to a particular classroom, then lowers her voice to a whisper. See? In here! This way you describe blue bunny chocolate flavored ice cream. Pillowy. Monica peers through the window. Sure enough, there's a girl sitting alone, intently reading a book. I feel like a creep doing this. You should go inside and talk to her. Me? You're the president, and I would probably scare her away. Okay, fine, I'll do it. Monica takes a deep breath, then timidly enters the classroom. That was fast. Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Why, what happened? Um, well, I entered the classroom, and she didn't even look up from her book. She just kind of left the flyer on her desk and then walked out. <laughs> That's kind of cute. But I'm sure she'll see it and want to join the club. I hope so. Shall we head back now? 
to head back to the club room. So you're feeling rather accomplished, and Monica's still feeling embarrassed by the encounter. Upon uh, returning, Monica and Sayuri resume their strategy meeting. They discuss various different kinds of recruitment tactics, from professional to silly. After going through Sayori's list, with Monica coming up with ideas of her own, do end up in a better spot than from where they began. Well, I would say today was pretty productive, wasn't it? Yeah, I think we're starting to make progress. Can't wait to get some new members. Hey, what's this? Sayori appears at the sheet of paper Monica was jotting on earlier. Oh, don't mind that. I was just thinking to myself. Join the literature club. Write the way into your heart? That's so cute! <laughs> Thought it was a little overdramatic. But, Sayori pauses and thinks for a moment. You know, I don't think you give yourself enough credit. What? What do you mean? Like, I don't know. I feel like I could tell from talking to you today. Seems like you're always afraid of doing something wrong. Yeah, but... Would you call yourself a perfectionist? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely am. I mean, I always have an idea in my head of how I want things to go. And it's like, I can't accept anything less than that. But I think in the end, it helps me try my hardest at everything. So I don't think it's that bad. Like with this club, we have such an opportunity to make it into exactly how we envision it. But it feels like we only have one shot at it. So I'm just really afraid of it deviating from that division. What's the vision? It's... Monica pauses to think, then shakes her head at herself. <sighs> I don't know. I just want everyone to... Monica trails off. Smiling, Sayuri taps her finger against a sheet of paper. Right the way into your heart? I think what you're trying to do is to make the club that you need the most out of anyone. Well, you're the one who knows yourself best, of course. But I'm here to help you. Monica returns Sayori's smile. It's sort of amazing how kind you are. We're really going to make this the best club ever. Sayori nods, and the two remain silent for a moment, lost in thought. The only sound is the steady whisper of the air conditioner. The only movement is the afternoon sunlight, trickling its way in and out of the moving clouds. Sayori breaks the moment with a big yawn. Time to go home? <sighs> God damn it. You tell me, you're the president. <laughs> in that case, today's meeting is officially over. I look forward to tomorrow. Me too! Sayori beams and grabs her things. You could go on ahead. I need a few minutes still. Oh, I can wait. That's alright. I just want some alone time. Mm, in that case, Sayori waves enthusiastically at Monica. Good luck! Monica smiles and waves in return as Sayori spins her way out of the classroom. All alone, she sighs to herself and takes a minute to zone out. She wasn't prepared for the self-reflection encouraged by Sayori. She decides it was something she probably needed right about now. The club that I need the most. I don't get it. I just wanted to start a club with more passion. Something that I could use to help lead people to happiness. Literature is the key to that. Because it's the window to the real person inside of us. Underneath the person who's forced to always smile and blend in. The person who's forced to be... Perfect. Hmm? Monica suddenly noticed a folder on the floor by her desk. Did Sayori leave this behind? I hope it doesn't have her homework in it. Worried, Monica opens a folder to check. Poems. It's a folder of poems. Become the flower. The feeling of joy is a flower plucked from the ground. The color of the scent. It's so pretty in my hair. Every day I pluck some flowers, as though they just they grew just for me. A lifetime of peace and nourishment yanked away in an instant. All for me, all for joy. I need more. I need more joy. I need more happy. Pluck 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 every day. Pluck pluck pluck. So pretty in my hair. Pluck pluck pluck. You're going to die, and you too. Beneath my feet, a flower stands alone. It beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots. <laughs> Caressing the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends? I look in every direction. The field I stand in. The prosperous field. The barren wasteland. The fruits of my labor. The carnage of my joy. And that is why I've decided. I must. Become the flower. What the? Wait. Yori.
Well, that was something. You can use the skip button to fast forward the text you already read. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're gonna practice for setting them in front of each other. No way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how, you, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. <sighs> the title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. <sighs> is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? Glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the rec rec the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That... that was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. You ready to go next, Sayuri? Uh, I'll go next. Ah! Yuri's fired up to all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You could do it, Yuri. It's called... After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into it, the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. So Yuri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Uh, <laughs> sorry I giggled. <laughs> Sayori. A lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're, you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives me a whole new meaning. Soft things make depression. Yes. Sayori makes poems about flowers and depression. Soft things make depression. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> even Vinny liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. No! They're 15! The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be the other poems that wouldn't But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen your poems over years where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. You might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. 
Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> then next time I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before Vinny. Not like I could compare to you guys anyway. I might as well let Vinny lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki. <sighs> it's fine, it's fine. Might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I just have to go with what I wrote for today. Stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me. Making me feel terribly awkward. Thank you, George. I assume they're all the same age because they are all in high school together. What do you mean? I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. It's something that'll improve over time, though. Around the same age. How about that? Is that better? Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you looking at me? Because you're presenting. Mm. Anyway, this poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. Words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. You want their... SSN Snow. Your weird shit faces are reminding you of Code Lyoko. What? I don't know. I'd have to go back and look. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Ah, well... Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. When it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. Yeah, their foreheads aren't big enough. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too, it doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. Yo quiero Taco Bell. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's a big day. I can't wait! I can do this. I can do this. Boop to the others with her booty. <laughs> Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep! Look at you two always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? 
Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. it. Must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Vinny. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home together with Sayuri once more. Even though only, it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. Today, Sayuri is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Aha, <laughs> no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day Yuri has to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> oh, this is... I kind of want to know what she says. Sayori, really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? But, but she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez, I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. What are you? I don't even know what the hell. I don't know enough Spanish to follow that conversation. You're so silly, Vinny. You think about me too much sometimes. You would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sorry, I already made up my mind. I really can't figure out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never gonna happen? Hmm conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about, but I want to respect her and keep her happy too. And again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what'll happen in that time. Fireworks! Shiny? Nope. Ha ha happiness? Yeah. Clumsy. Absolutely. Cry? Yep. Shame? Yep. God damn you. Peaceful? Uh, alone. I guarantee you alone is going to be a Sayori. Fucking Christ. Hurts. Adventure! Ribbon. Oof. Depression. Defeat. Grief. Anxiety. Mm -mm. Who has vertigo? Boop. Covet. Wow. Tears. Sadness. Scars? Talk about Vince and all like that. You watch these streams, if so, then she's wonderful. They tried once. They even tried listening to the podcast once. And they just said, yeah, no. <laughs> oh, man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah, <laughs> must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano? Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. Ah, uh, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Huh? Were you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival, but it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? It's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? Huh? I didn't say I didn't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because... 
right in your name. Well, uh -huh. What happened? Thank you for the follow. I wasn't expecting a follow. Mon Ica. Eh? It's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me. Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori's sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Ah, uh, uh, <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me. You could go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? Water and water and water, water, 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 water I don't think you guys will ever have enough coordination to make a W shape out of the water emote. <sighs> anyway, it just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Water Fuck and you. water and water, water, water and 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 I worriedly glanced at Sayori, Sayori before turning back toward everyone else. The conversation has already dispersed, with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Mana if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Vinny, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading a little into it a little too much, but she seems to, a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? Can't say I've noticed anything about her. Glad you're enjoying. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind, but I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you. Uh, you certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. This time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. Just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. 
Eh? Are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? You're saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Vinny? Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... I already talked about you more than anything else, you know. Huh? She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. It's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different than how I it has always been. <laughs> you're so funny. Have you thought maybe you're, you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. Try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Uh, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her. She's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else. That's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? You now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. There's nothing I could do besides wait for Monica. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out the phone. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Easily, Sayori. This is your best one so far. It's really nice. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Sayori, you've been a little quiet today. Is everything alright? Huh? Of course. Everything's fine. Maybe I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> You want to take a nap or something? No, that's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? I only want to see smiles on your face. Well, alright. Hey, Vinny. I'm still a little surprised. I really thought you would try writing your poems like the way Yuri does. Or even Natsuki. But in the end... It... But in the end... Yeah, I guess you're the one who likes this the most. Why? Why? You don't want to get closer with everyone else? Wait, of course I do. That doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Sayori. I know you have to sometimes put up with me. And I have to sometimes put up with you. But we have a wavelength or something. And this is how the poem came out. Sometimes it feels like you're the only exciting thing in my life. Sometimes- Oh my god, this is a con- Fucking fashion. Sometimes it's just easier to write when thinking about you. Sayori? N no. Minnie, I don't deserve this. You're too nice to me. Why are you doing this? Sayori has trouble keeping her voice steady all of a sudden. If you had fun with everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. Sayori. Glance around the room to make sure nobody has noticed this. Sayori. I probably never said this before, but I don't understand what you're feeling right now. Tell me what will cheer you up. Sayori shakes her head. She sniffles and keeps shaking her head. Finally, she gathers herself and puts on a smile. It's nothing, Vinny. It's just a little rain cloud. Sorry you had to see that. <laughs> I promise it won't happen again. Just smiles from everyone, okay? That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I'm gonna go home a little bit earlier today. Sayori, tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? See you tomorrow. Before I could say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out the classroom humming to herself. <laughs> Who should I show my poem to next? Monica! Hi, Vinny. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, for, but performing in front of a bunch of people... I'll have to give it more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. You won't see her sad again. 
<laughs> Sounds like depression. <laughs> it would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure, I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. It's kind of funny. How so? No, not the poem. I mean, it's funny how your poems and Sayori's poems have been getting more and more similar to each other every day. I'm surprised you're so in sync with her. Then again, you've been spending a lot of time together lately, haven't you? I guess you could say that. Although we kind of grew up as best friends, I haven't been seeing as much of her this past year. Since I joined the club, we've been spending a lot of time together again. I see, I see. That reminds me. Bad how Sayori's been a little bit off today. Yeah, did she tell you something? Uh, well... Vinny, you haven't been flir flirting with her, have you? Of course not. I've been treating her like I always do. Alright. Just making sure. I know how you care mu how much you care about her. It'd be terrible if something bad happened to her, so keep an eye on her. Sayori's been acting so much happier ever since you joined the club. What could have happened all of a sudden? <sighs> well, never mind. This really isn't the time to be talking about this. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Uh, all right. Water and water and water, water, 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 water and water and water, water and water and water, 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 water, water and 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 water Yeah, Twitch doesn't care. It will delete any enters. Alright. The lady who knows everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wonders her. The lady who knows everything. The beautiful lady who has found every answer. All meaning, all purpose. And all that was ever sought. Here I am. A feather. Lost adrift to the sky. Victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. When all else has failed me, not all others have turned away. The legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the twilit sky. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall, and fall, and fall even more, gentle as a feather. <sighs> a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me. Between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of the beautiful lady. I look at her eyes, find no one at her, no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we only seek the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. <laughs> and with a breath, she blows me back a flip, and I pick up a gust of wind. Check podcast and roll before bed. Uh, I tried to, but the, um, the, 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 the video did not want to load on my phone. It flipped the fuck out. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. Never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It'd be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put that much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, They'll want to focus more on everything that went into it, and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way. 
it will make you want to continue improving. Almost like having your own little, little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Good night, Jordan. Thanks for listening. Who should I put? This one's alright. Alright? Well, yeah. About as good as yesterday's, anyway. I see you're not. I see what you're going for. But it's just not really my style. I mean, that's fine. I'm mostly just glad you're trying a little bit. Well, of course, at least I'm trying. Why are you so emotionally invested in my poems, anyway? Isn't that more of a compliment to me? It. No, gross. It's not like I care. It's just that one of us in this club has to make sure you're not slacking off. Really? Well, what if you ended up just scaring me away? That's, um... It's not like you would actually do that. Yeah, you're right. It's kind of fun to hang out there, even if I have to put up with you. Get... Oh. <laughs> Natsuki's elbow connects with my stomach. Oh? Maybe I won't mind scaring you away after all. I was <coughs> just joking. Oh, I know. Don't worry, I was too. Tell that to my broken rib. How the hell do you call that a joke? That seriously hurt. Well, maybe it was funny to her. I guess that's kind of the point. I should really just wash my mouth around Natsuki. Anyway. Natsuki holds her poem out to me like nothing ever happened. I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. Uh, I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that, you're that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand, bathe in sunbeams, and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea, and let me see you shine. <sighs> Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail, set you free in my windy sail, and remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away, I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day, I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. Yeah. I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. Besides, speech is awesome. It's kinda hard to write anything negative about the beach. So you decided to write about the beach first, and then came up with the message later? Yeah, well... It's only because of what happened yesterday. I mean, after Yuri and I realized we kinda wrote about the same thing. She wanted to pick a topic and have us both write about it or whatever. Uh, you could really see her doing that too. Making us write about a simple topic, then trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical, too. But there's nothing wrong with doing it once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. And finally, Yuri. Well done, Vinny. You've definitely improved your writing over the course of these few days. Has my advice been helpful to you? Yeah, definitely. I'm glad. Hearing our writing like this, a lot more fun and rewarding than I anticipated. I need to remember to thank Monica. I think we all felt a little awkward at first, but now it seems like everyone is enjoying sharing their writing and seeing what others think. I guess I can't really agree. Disagree. Uh, I was afraid this whole thing would be a chore, but it's a great way for me to spend some personal time with all the girls in the club. But it's been fun getting to know everyone in their writing. And I guess doing some writing myself. Well, have you learned anything about yourself, Vinny? Huh? Well, you know how I like to say that writing is a very personal way to get in touch with yourself. In the end, it doesn't matter if you're a good writer or a bad writer. Even my opinions are just opinions, you know? As always, I believe what's most important is exploring and discovering yourself. That's comforting. I'm kind of afraid of disappointing you in some way or another. Huh? Why me? Well, you're always sophisticated with your writing and have the most advice to share. Is that so? Yuri thinks for a good minute. That must be terrible. Huh? For me to have become someone whose opinion is fearsome. How unlikable of me. Yuri, it's not as bad as you're making it sound in your head. I just meant that I respect your opinion. 
I see. Sorry that I always overthink and come to those sorts of conclusions. I'm just a little too used to it. Overthinking? Being disliked. Yuri. What? What am I saying? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up. Let's move on. Alright. You want to share your poem now? Okay. Here. Beach. Oh god. A marvel millions of years in the making. For the womb of Earth... Chastically meets the surface. What the fuck does that mean? Under a clear blue sky, an expanse of bliss. But beneath gray, rolling clouds, an endless enigma. The easiest world to get lost in. One where everything can be found. Only one can build a sandcastle where the sand is wet. But where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in? Or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? There is no way that that's an O. That is a fucking S. There's no fucking way. Okay, maybe it is. Fuck. I told you, I need to learn to read. <laughs> uh, will it gently... Look at your foundations until you give in, or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same, yet we still build sandcastles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic, the breeze is gentle, yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils. I turn back, and I abandon my peace to a road at the shore. Drift forward, and I return to Earth forevermore. Um, I'm aware that the beach is kind of an inane thing to write about, but I did my best to make a metaphorical approach to it. Yeah, Nasuke already told me about it. Sh she did? She didn't say anything weird, did she? She just wanted us to write about the same topic again. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or thought process. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise that she'd want to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request. But, well, I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It could be refreshing, you know? What feeling? The, the... Standing in the wet sand, letting the waves go... Up to your feet? Up to your ankles? good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. Waves going over your feet while it buries your feet in the sand. Yeah. Okay, you three, we're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. Is it just me or did you say something strange just now? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez, why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Uh, stagnating air is common, foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Uh huh. Seems you're right. Uh, Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to, anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please, show some decency. Oh, come on. Actually, she wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Oh. That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier, and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out what the rest of the- You completely ignored me, you fucker. Let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. But we might need a lot of them, in different flavors. Can you handle all of that by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted! And as for myself... 
I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. So Yuri will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri... Yuri, you can... Uh... Um... Guys? Can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... am useless. No, no! That's not it at all! You're the most talented person here, you know. Now Natsuki's... Now Natsuki's pouting too? Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sayuri enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Uh, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? You should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great! You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Vinny. The only one who is truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. Probably go a long way to give one of them a hint. You could always help me out as well. I'd be really appreciative of that. Uh, that's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give to you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, uh, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own? Vinny may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore... Maybe more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? It sounds more like you're just making excuses for Vinny to... What are you saying? It will be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't? Just what do you think? Guys, guys. Let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Vinny to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said... I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez, can we just settle this already? Yeah. Vinny, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, of course. Hmm. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. But of course I'm going with... Is this an actual option? Do we actually get to spend time with Monica? I mean, obviously the right choice is Sayori. But I do actually want to see what happens if I say Monica. I mean, if it's going to be anyone, then I prefer helping Sayori. I mean, we're already neighbors, and... But Monica said... Monica said that Sayori was helping her. Jeez, do you really hate us that much? No! Sorry, I didn't mean this for this to be difficult. Just think of the club, okay? Well, I guess I should probably be helping Monica. Yay, you picked me! Hold on one second! Yeah! Monica, you're the one who needs the least help out of all of us. Eh, but... I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work already most suitable for one person, but you already have Sayori as well. But Vinny was the one who... Ah, uh, that doesn't matter. You're the one who scared him into picking you in the first place. You're the club president, Monica. You're supposed to make responsible decisions for the club. Monica, you shouldn't let any ulterior moti motives interfere with this decision. Ulterior motives? What are you saying, Yuri? In fact, it sounds like you guys are the ones with ulterior mo motives. I am struggling really hard to say that. Excuse me? Otherwise, this wouldn't have been made into such a big deal in the first place. That's completely false, Monica. They're both ganging up. They are. Yeah, we have a lot of work to do, you know. We won't do as good a job if you make us work alone. Uh, maybe that's true. Think of the club, Monica. If, you, if we want our event to succeed, then we need to appropriately distribute our resources. I'm a resource now. So, are you gonna do the right thing, President? Okay, okay, I get it. Uh, it's technically most logical for Vinny to help one of you two, so I guess that's what we'll do. Yeah, that, that is a 
weird thing. Why is that not an option? I went with Natsuki the first time I played the game, so I guess I'll go with Yuri. Well, I'll probably be most helpful helping out Yuri. Me? Are you serious? Why would you- Natsuki, I can already tell you're about to say something mean. N no I was just saying- Ugh. So, you'll be helping Yuri then, Vinny? Yeah. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of- No shit! So, I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah, I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. So, is that everything we needed to go over? Yep, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited may not be the right word. But I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Vinny? Me? I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. Good enough for me! <laughs> What about you, Natsuki? Natsuki? What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. No, that's not what I meant at all. Uh... Your anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Vinny picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. Nothing that I do for the events will compare to that, so... So... Get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised, though. Why? Why? Um, well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I'm... I know. I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken back by Yuri's words. She already had trouble with words. Trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her own comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I could tell she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No, I kinda appreciated it. Sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. But I'm gonna say this. You better bet that my cupcakes are gonna be the best part of the whole event. Ah, uh, I believe you. Yeah. I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. Alright, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. They start to follow Monica and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Um... Huh? I turn around. Sorry, I realize that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes. Alright then. You and I exchange phone numbers. Okay, then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Huh? My house? I is that a problem? I no, not at all. I just thought I would be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. Uh, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I would prefer going to yours. Alright, in that case it won't be a problem. I decide not to press Yuri for a reason. Not like it should matter much either way, so I'll just need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I managed to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Vinny. I think that will make a very protective team. Even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. Wait! You don't actually think that, do you? I... don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. Oh. <laughs> that was me saying that, wasn't it? I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But... Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Huh? I didn't realize. I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I... She thinks for a long time again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After the exchange, I make my way out the door, and Yuri follows. I can't believe this! Yuri's going to be coming to my house on Sunday! Even though I would have preferred to do this with Sayori, my anxiety shoots through the roof. 
I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point. But who knows what might end up happening when we're outside of school. She even told me she was looking forward to it. I shake my head. Why do I feel nervous that Sayori finds out about this? It's not like we feel that way about each other. Besides, like Monica said, this is all about the club. I have nothing to worry about. If I just go with it, then I'll have a good time. It's... Time to end for the night. We'll see what happens on Sunday. Next time. It won't be Sunday. It'll be... What is today? Monday. That we find out. Unless I have Pokemon at that point, in which case the next game will be Pokemon. Anyway, good night. <laughs>